Traditionally, ships carry pairs of lifeboats that are launched over the sides by davits. There are three types you might see. Totally enclosed lifeboats, which are carried on many cargo ships. Partially enclosed lifeboats, which are carried on passenger ships and on many newer cargo ships, a single lifeboat that free falls down a ramp and over the stern of the ship. These are always totally enclosed for obvious reasons, as they dive into the water and can be partly submerged during launching. An auxiliary david or crane is fitted to recover the boat after drills. It can also lower it into the water if there is an obstruction in the drop zone. As gas, chemical and oil tankers carry flammable or toxic cargoes that can give off vapours that surround the sinking ship, their lifeboats have a 10 minute supply of fresh air inside. Tankers that carry flammable cargoes, such as crude oil, will also have a water spray system to give extra protection while launching into a gas cloud or burning sea. Whatever type of lifeboat you use, they will be brightly coloured and rigid. They will also have an engine that is capable of powering the lifeboat at a speed of at least 6 knots for 24 hours and a selection of equipment inside to help you survive. There are interior and exterior lights, two painters and a means to board from the water. Inside there should be two boat hooks, a buoyant baler, two buckets, a manual pump, two hatchets, a fire extinguisher for an oil fire, fuel, tools for the engine, a sea anchor, a magnetic compass, and oars for non-free fall boats. There will also be a life-saving signal chart, including a signalling mirror, a signalling torch, parachute, hand flares and buoyant smoke signals, and a radar reflector. There will also be a first aid kit, anti-seasickness medicine and seasickness bags, two buoyant rescue coits and lines, and TPAs. Lastly, there will be a survival manual, three litres of water per person, food and tin openers, and fishing tackle. Before launching any survival craft, Look around to check there are no obstructions in the water. Overside emergency lights are provided to be used at night and the person in charge will normally act as coxswain, steering the boat and controlling the launching. Launching procedures vary according to the type of boat being used. Free-fall lifeboats are boarded in the stowed position and launched from inside. In an emergency, the typical launching procedure will be to disconnect any power supply to the boat and check that any safety chains used for maintenance have been disconnected. Get everyone boarded and then close the door. Everyone must be seated with their safety belt fastened. Momentum will carry the lifeboat away from the ship when launched, but start the engine anyway and put the rudder to midships. Totally enclosed lifeboats are boarded in the stowed position and launched from inside. In an emergency, the typical launching procedure will be to make sure the painter is properly secured and disconnect any power supply to the boat. Get everyone boarded, release the gripes and then close the door. Everyone should be seated with their safety belt fastened. Once the engine has started, the coxswain pulls the brake release cable and the lifeboat lowers itself to the water under gravity. When waterborne, the coxswain releases the full hooks. Partially enclosed lifeboats are lowered to an embarkation deck before boarding. This allows large numbers of passengers to be embarked quickly. In an emergency, the procedure is to Disconnect any power supply to the boat and remove the securing gripes. The lifeboat can then be lowered to the embarkation deck. It will be brought neatly alongside, either by tracing pennants or by the pre-adjusted bowsing gear. When the passengers are boarded and seated, 
Start the engine. Slacken off the bowsing gear to enable the boat to swing clear of the ship, and then remove it. The lifeboat should then be lowered to the water using the remote brake release, and then release the full hooks when waterborne. In addition to lifeboats, all ships carry life rafts. These can be inflatable, or they can also be rigid and designed to be launched in three different ways. The most common is by throwing them overboard. You need to inflate these in the water and then climb down using embarkation ladders or descent devices to board the raft. Unfortunately, there's a chance you'll get wet in the process. Launching a life raft using a daffod is also quite common. Here, the raft is swung out and inflated at deck level. The crew or passengers board before lowering themselves to the water, so they stay dry, reducing the risk of hypothermia. Alternatively, rafts might be launched as part of a marine evacuation system, known as an MES. This consists of a descent slide or chute that allows boarding around its lower end. They are used on passenger ships for quick evacuation. Most life rafts should be fitted with a hydrostatic release unit, which allows the life raft to float free if the ship sinks to around four meters deep. The life raft will inflate automatically, with the painter fixed to a weak link. This will allow it to break before the raft is dragged underwater. All life rafts will be brightly coloured after inflation, and they will contain a selection of equipment inside. They will all have interior and exterior lights, and a means to board from water. They will also have two sponges, a manual pump, a safety knife, two sea anchors, two buoyancy paddles, a repair outfit, and a topping up pump. As with lifeboats, there will also be a life saving signal chart, signalling torch and mirror and a radar reflector, parachute, hand flares and buoyant smoke signals. There will also be a first aid kit with medicine and seasickness bags, buoyant rescue quoits and lines, and TPAs. Lastly, there will be a survival manual. 1.5 litres of water per person, food, tin openers and fishing tackle. Launching and boarding a life raft will vary depending on whether the raft is supposed to be thrown, David launched, or part of a marine evacuation system. There is also a procedure for emergency launching. This is the most common type of life raft, where there is only one line coming out of the container. The line inflates the raft and also acts as the painter. If you have one with a separate firing line, you should check the manufacturer's instructions for more information. Untie the painter line from the weak link and fix it to a strong point. Remove the lashing that holds the life raft in position and throw or roll the raft overboard. When the raft is in the water, pull the painter out until it becomes tight and then give it a sharp pull to inflate the raft. This will take about one minute. The sea anchor will automatically deploy. Do not worry about any whistling noises as the gas bottle is designed to fill the raft tubes until the safety valves operate. Pull the raft back to the embarkation ladder, which should be in place by now, and try to get in without getting wet. Do not jump onto the raft, as you might land on your shipmate or damage the raft. Find the paddles, cut the painter, and paddle away from the ship. You might want to bring the sea anchor aboard while paddling. David launched life rafts are fitted when dry evacuation is required without a lifeboat. Ships with free fall lifeboats are required to have David launched life rafts and a rescue boat. Rafts and rescue boats can share a David, but they are designed to use different release hooks. Make sure you know which hook is used for each. In an emergency situation, the typical launching procedure will be to Open the flap on the raft, hook the daffod fall onto the eye inside, 
and remove the lashing that holds the life raft in position. Lift the raft clear of obstacles. Tie the container line to a strong point and have someone hold the ends of the bow and stern bowsing line in order to steady the raft. Pull out the painter and tie it to a strong point. Swing the daffod so the raft is correctly positioned outboard of the ship's side, opposite the boarding gate. Pull out the rest of the painter and inflate the raft with a sharp pull. After the raft is inflated, position its entrance alongside the boarding gate and secure it with the bowsing lines. Board the raft, moving people around to keep it balanced. Let go of the bowsing lines and pull on the David Brake remote release cable to lower the raft to the water. When waterborne, the full hook should automatically disconnect. If it doesn't, there is a manual release. Finally, cut the painter and paddle away from the ship. There are many types of marine evacuation systems, and the launching crew should always be properly trained in the one on board the vessel. The general procedure in an emergency is to deploy a slide or descent tube to create a quick route down to water level. A life raft or boarding station will be inflated at the bottom of the slide at the same time. Some form of bowsing system will be used to hold it in the correct position. When secured, the launching crew can go down the slide to the raft or boarding platform. Extra life rafts can now be released remotely. These are arranged so that they can be pulled alongside the boarding platform and inflated ready for boarding. When the launching crew have secured the rafts, the passengers can begin to go down the slide and board the life rafts. As rafts become full, the ship's rescue boat should be connected in order to tow the rafts clear of the ship. Most life rafts are designed to release automatically, inflate themselves and then break the weak link to float free of a sinking ship. Some life rafts are designed to be reversible or automatically self-righting, but many rafts might inflate upside down. If this happens, someone must enter the water and right it, but they must put on protection against the cold water before swimming to the raft. Climb onto the raft near the CO2 cylinder. Stand on the CO2 bottle and pull on the writing straps while leaning back. This is easier if the raft is turned into the wind. The person writing the raft will end up back in the water. To enter the raft from there, you'll find a boarding ladder in front of the canopy opening.